All right. Well, we are about on the hour, so I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, thanks to everyone for tuning in this week. Um, as you probably know, this is the time every week where we have our um, where we have our regular listening session that we've titled "For Caring and Sharing Through Technology." Usually, it's a, a discussion uh, from the Tor grantees about what's going well with their grant and what's not and what they could use help with. Uh, today, we have a bit of a different session. Um, we actually have our uh, Tor government program officers on the line with us, and they're going to be uh, talking about completing your annual Tor progress report. Um, also, unlike our other sessions, uh, this meeting is being recorded, and we're planning to uh, we're planning to upload it on our website afterwards, as well as send out uh, handouts for the slides that you can see now. Um, I want to make sure that we have enough time to get through everything and everyone has time to ask questions. So uh, I think I can hand it over to, to Amy. Thank you, Jeff. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Amy Romero, and I am a TOR GPO. Um, I will be doing an overview of the TOR programmatic review with my colleague, uh, William Longinetti, today. Uh, please feel free to ask questions anytime during the presentation. You can send us questions via chat. Uh, and also, at the end, we will uh, just open up the floor for any questions, discussions. Uh, we want to make sure that all of this, this information is clear. Uh, next slide, please, Jeff. So this is a required report, and it must be submitted in the ERA Commons system by no later than December 31st. Um, if possible, please submit your report earlier. Uh, Will and I and Lini have to compile all of this information, and it takes us some time. So the earlier, the better, but uh, the deadline is December 31st. This report should include a summary of your progress towards meeting your goals and objectives. Uh, we use your report to show the impact of the TOR program and, and, and what is the impact in the tribal communities. Um, so give us, give us as much information as possible. Please include the number of prevention activities, treatment activities, uh, and the number of people that you're serving. Uh, we're really looking to get numbers on these reports, as much data as possible. Next slide, please. So for FY 2018 grantees that are ending year two of funding, this report will cover both years of the grant. So it is an aggregate of year one and year two. Please provide an update from the very beginning of the grant. So from September 29th, 2018 to September 29th, 2020. So that is the project period of time. Actually, September 30th, 2018 to September 29, 2020. So two years. Uh, if you will be closing out your grant after September 29th and have not submitted a no-cost extension request, please complete the close-out questions that are at the end of the report. So these are new. These are a few questions at the very end that only apply to grantees that will be closing the grant. Most of the no-cost extensions have been approved. We still have few that are in process of approval. So if you have not received a notice of award, uh, you might be receiving that by September 29th. Follow up with your GPO, and we will let you know the status of that. Next slide, please. FY 2019 grantees that are ending year one will submit data from the beginning of the grant. The period covers September 30th, 2019 to September 29, 2020, so the whole year. And you can use the mid-year report update that you submitted to us and update that information. Next slide, please. Okay, so I will go over each section on the report, and I will provide some examples of activities. Um, some of the, these categories may not apply to your TOR program, 
please only respond on activities that are TOR funded. A lot of you are receiving uh, funding from other grants and other sources, so we ask that you don't include activities that are not TOR funded on this report. Uh, you can note that in a specific category is not applicable and just to skip to the next section. And we will start with the strategic, the strategic plan. Um, here we would like to know if an, a strategic plan was developed or if an existing plan was used. Uh, let us know if you have an, a strategic plan and, and how was that used during the life of the grant. The next category is the workforce development. Uh, please provide an update on all training and uh, certification activities. This can be training activities for staff or community members. For example, peer mentor training and certification, data waiver training, any awareness trainings, naloxone training, uh, any conferences that your staff attended, also site visits to other programs for learning purposes. Um, it's important to include the number of training sessions and an estimated number of participants that receive training. So if you could let us know that you have completed, you know, 10 um, naloxone trainings and a total of 200 people were trained, we're looking for that type of information. Uh, under prevention, include all the prevention activities. These could be community meetings, health fairs, youth prevention programs, harm reduction programs. Uh, many of you had events like drug take back day, uh, distribution of brochures, distribution of any type of informational materials, uh, media campaigns. Uh, also include any evidence-based practices that your program is using. Uh, include the number of prevention activities and the estimated number of individuals that your activities reached. Um, and, and we know that not every program has an evaluator and is not really doing an intensive evaluation um, of the TOR program, but if you could give us an estimate of the number of how many people you think some of these activities have reached, that would be great. Next slide, please. Well, the next section is treatment. Uh, so please include all of the treatment services that you are providing with TOR funds. Uh, for example, medication-assisted treatment, individual and group counseling, residential treatment, psychotherapy. Many of you are doing family therapy, case management, drug testing, any screening and assessment activities, as well as referral to treatment services. You may not be providing treatment uh, on site, but if you are doing referral to treatment, also let us know uh, to what type of treatment uh, activities are you referring to. Include evidence-based practices like CBT, motivational interviewing, the matrix model. Um, if you are doing MAT, please give us as much information as you can on uh, the type of MAT that you're doing, the type of medications used, and the number of prescriptions. Um, as well as the number of individuals that are receiving the treatment services. And this is also applicable for any treatment services. Let us know the number of people that are receiving the services. Recovery support services, under this section, please include any recovery activities. And this would uh, include group sessions, help groups, peer recovery support services, like peer coaches, mentors, uh, recovery housing, if you are doing that, also transportation services, uh, mindfulness, wellness sessions, uh, and a lot of you are using funding to do uh, different wellness sessions like nutrition programs, yoga. Uh, please include all of that in this section, as well as evidence-based practices like the White Bison Well Variety Program, uh, Medicine Wheel, Mending Broken Hearts, and any others include the number of recovery sessions. And even if these sessions are happening in a virtual platform, we know that a lot of the treatment and recovery sessions are not happening face-to-face -face, uh, due to COVID. So if you're doing a lot of these sessions in a virtual manner, please also count those sessions, include those in your report. And 
Uh, many TOR grantees are providing treatment cost assistance and transitional assistance for individuals uh, returning to the community from justice settings. Let us know what type of assistance you are providing. It could be care packages for clients going into transitional housing or residential services. It could be transportation vouchers. Uh, many programs actually have drivers that will drive someone from the jail facility to the program. Um, any incentives that you're providing, as well as payment to treatment services and prescriptions. Include the number of people that are receiving these type of services on your report. So, I see go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. I was just going to say, I see we have a question in the chat. Um, if they had a collaborative effort with other grant programs, can we still report that information and just state which programs we collaborated with? Yes, yes, please include that type of information and let us know um, if you're, you know, what other programs you're collaborating with, but yes, you can. Okay, so at this time, I will turn it over to William Longinetti. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Um, are you able to hear me okay? Yes. Great. Loud. All right. Well, hello, everyone. My name is William Longinetti. I am a project officer on the Tribal Opioid Response Grant, along with Amy and Lini Simon. Um, and so I'm going to be going through the rest of the slides. I'm just continuing where Amy left off. So um, there are a few other tour activities that we ask you to report on in, in this annual report. And just keep in mind, you only need to provide us information if these things apply to you. So um, the first thing here is tribal epidemiology centers. So, you know, we encourage all tour grantees to work with uh, tribal epidemiology centers, you know, where that's possible. So we ask you to, you know, tell us about any work you've done with your uh, area tech. Um, you know, for example, uh, surveillance, data collection, performance evaluation, Maybe they're helping you with GIPRO or, you know, uh, you're doing some other form of data collection. We, we would like you to report that to us. And then besides that, just we want you to tell us about your data collection and performance evaluation efforts in general. So, um, you know, mainly this is going to refer to GIPRO, but, uh, you know, you may be doing other data collection in addition to GIPRO. Um, and we also ask you to give us some information on how GIPRA data collection is happening, whether it's through peer recovery uh, mentors or peer uh, support specialists or, you know, some other staff person. Um, and again, yeah, if you're collecting any additional data, uh, you know, um, in your treatment or prevention recovery efforts, we're, we're always interested in that as well. Um, and then we ask you to report on the number of and type of culturally appropriate and traditional practices that you are funding through tour, for example, sweat lodges or talking circles. Um, we ask you to describe, you know, the type of traditional practice, the number that, you know, happened in the reporting period, the number of individuals you've reached through these activities. Um, next slide, please. And we also ask you to report on any telehealth activities that you've done through your tour grant. Um, for example, Project Echo, teleconsultations, telemedicine, you know, maybe you're doing counseling or MAT through MAT. And, and, you know, under that, we ask you to report to us the number of telehealth encounters, encounter types, and the number of individuals who received some form of telehealth services. Um, and we're also asking you for some information on any infrastructure development that you've done through TOR. So TOR allows you to spend a certain amount of your funding on infrastructure development, for example, um, enhancing your electronic health record system. I know many folks are doing that. Um, maybe developing MAT policies, um, integrating your behavioral health efforts with primary care. Maybe you're doing some work towards setting up a prescription drug monitoring program, or you know, uh, maybe you're making facility renovations. So we would like details on any infrastructure developments of that kind. And, and also we want you to tell us about the impact of infrastructure development on your treatment prevention and recovery outcomes. And then we're asking you to tell us the number of unduplicated individuals served with opioid use disorders and other substance use disorders. So 
you know, this is the tribal opioid response grant, so your efforts should be focused on individuals who present with an opioid use disorder. And so we're asking you for the total number of individuals who you've reached through treatment, recovery, and prevention efforts, you know, um, with, with opioid use disorders. And also just to give us your, you know, what your, what your original client target number was along with that. Next slide, please. And there will be a section in the annual report where you describe to us um, any key personnel updates. So um, the first thing is if, um, you know, the status of anyone assigned to the grant has changed, just provide some details on that. Uh, you know, if there's new staff on the grant um, and also, you know, any other staff matters would fall into this category, whether or not you're fully staffed, if you're having issues with staff turnover or difficulty hiring, any ish, any difficulties with recruitment or retention, uh, this is where you would mention that. Next slide, please. And then we have a section on barriers and success stories. So, um, you know, we, we definitely pay special attention to this. We want to know, you know, what's going well and what isn't. And this is, a you know, an opportunity for you to give us feedback on you know, how we might improve the, our, our role in the project as well. But first, we ask you to describe any barriers or critical issues your program encountered and then how you overcame those barriers. And um, separately from that, we're asking you in this reporting period to describe, you know, whether your program was affected by any fires or hurricanes or other natural disasters. Um, we know many of you have been seriously affected by these types of natural disasters. And so we want you, you know, to let us know um, how those affected you and describe any changes you made to your program in response to these types of events. And then we ask you to provide two examples that demonstrate your program's um, successes in achieving your goals and objectives and ensure that at least one of these examples highlights the achievement of a person served by your program. So basically to provide two success stories, maybe one of them being a client success story. Next slide, please. And I assume that uh, COVID would be lumped in with the other disasters. So, yeah, uh, actually, we have a dedicated section for COVID. Oh, um, that's right. So, it's right. Yeah, just, you know, given that everyone has been affected in some way by COVID, I think it war warranted its own question and section. So uh, we ask you to describe how your tour program was affected by COVID. COVID-19 and any resulting quarantine restrictions and to tell us about any changes you made to your program in response to COVID-19. So you know, we definitely want to hear from you about that. Um, and so uh, we'll go to the next slide. And this section applies only to those grants that will be closing out after September 29th. So the, the fiscal year 18 grantees who are not doing a no-cost extension. We have a few closeout questions for you to complete in the report. Um, and so there's basically three questions. The first is just to describe how you will sustain your project after it ends, um, you know, whether that's through, uh, you know, reimbursing billable treatment services. Maybe you've established new partnerships, new ways to fund the program. Um, maybe you've built your workforce capacity where, you know, you're able to provide a lot of these services now or maybe you've secured additional grant funding. So, you know, this is a question about sustainability of your grant. The second question is to describe the lessons you have learned through your grant project for addressing opioid use disorders in your community and um, the specific impacts of these lessons on your service delivery. So how have you, you know, incorporated these lessons into your operations, your clinical protocols, and how has this affected access to medication-assisted treatment prevention and recovery services. And describe any other areas of improvement in your program. And lastly, just to provide any in additional information that would be helpful for us at SAMHSA to consider in our future TOR grant efforts. So those, again, those questions only apply if you are ending the grant, if you're in your second year and you're not doing a no-cost extension. So for those of you who are in your first year, these don't apply. For those of you who are doing a no-cost extension, these don't apply. Next slide. And then we have some information on how to submit the report. Um, we're not going to do a demonstration on that today, but the instructions are in the slides and we'll be sharing the instructions. We link you to both 
a reference sheet and a YouTube video. Um, please reach out to us if you have trouble getting this submitted. I know ERA is challenging to use, and so you know we'll, we'll be available to help you. And um, and so please, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, you know, as you try to submit, if you run into any difficulty. But the instructions are all here. Next slide. And so now we'll be taking any questions that you have. 